Matthew 17, verse 9. Making the wording of the Holy Spirit. As they came down from the mountain, this is the mountain transfiguration, like I said, some believe it's actually Mount Hermon. Jesus charged them, saying, Tell a vision to no man. You want a Bible version about television? There you go. Tell the vision to no man. Until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So there he goes, explaining to him, explaining to Peter, James, and John the resurrection. In order to be resurrected from the dead, you got to die. So he's telling them the gospel. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then? Say, describe that Elias must first come. All right, you're talking about your death, but what about Elias? The scribes who are in charge with the scriptures say Elijah was supposed to come. Isn't it kind of funny? The fact is that we were just on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter says in verse 4, then said, and then answered Peter, said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If that will, let us make these three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. Well, there he is. But that's not the fulfillment of the scriptures. Jesus answered, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. That's the scriptures. Elias came with Moses talking about his, his death. But I say unto you that Elias, which is Elijah, has come already. And they knew him not. So Elijah has shown up and he was unknown to the people. That says so much for the scribes and the Pharisees. The prophecy has been fulfilled, yet they know not. They don't even know who the Messiah is today. And they say Isaiah 53 is the nation of Israel and the tormentor is the Gentile nation. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of the Son of Man suffer of them. Alright, there's a suffering. You gotta have a death for the resurrection. Then the disciples understood he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So do what they listed, and they put him in jail for preaching. Then they beheaded him. Because they wanted to get rid of him. He was a sore thorn in their flesh. Probably in preaching in the prison too. I wouldn't believe that he would have just shut up being in jail. I believe he would have been preaching. So Elias was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was Elias, but the nation rejected him. They rejected Jesus. So we're going to go into a period of time soon called the church. Israel corporate is going to be put up on a shelf, but not forsaken. Because individual Jews still could be saved. But had they believed John to be who he was, what he was, he would have been Elijah. There would have been no church age. History would have been a lot different. And when they were come to the multitude down the bottom of the mountain, there came him a certain man 
kneeling down to him and saying, so he's worshiping. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, moonstruck, and sore vexed, great pain. For oftentimes he falleth into fire, and often into water. So he's doing physical bodily harm to himself. Now Mark will give us a greater detail, Mark chapter 9, about this child. Mark 9, 14. In verse 17, he said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. He's unable to speak. And whithersoever he taketh him, the dumb spirit, the devil, was causing him to be a lunatic, he tarrieth him. So not only is he thrown into fire and thrown into water, Matthew, but he's actually ripping his skin open. And he foameth. You would say, you know, he's a uh, 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 rabies. Gnashes with his teeth. And he pineth away. Now the medical doctor, Luke 9, this guy's in three times. The lunatic. 937. You don't find that about the birth of Jesus. Verse 38, he says, Master, I beseech you, look upon my son, for he's my only child. Okay, there's even more. He's only got one child, and this child is a dumb spirit. He's a lunatic. The spirit is torturing him from within and without. And lo, the spirit takes him and suddenly crieth out, so now he, he's not speaking. He's a dumb spirit. So he's he's making noises instead of talking. And tearing him, ripping him apart and foaming. Bruising him. Hardly departed from him. Now, I believe back to Mark again real quick. There was only in Mark. Uh, I missed something here. Oh, oh yeah, verse 20. So they brought the child to Jesus. In the presence of Jesus, they brought him, the child, unto him, Jesus. <clears throat> when he saw him, straightway the spirit teared him, oh, ripped him apart, and fell on the ground wallowing and, and foaming. So even before Jesus Christ is lunatic, what the what the spirit is doing to him, and we'll study this, this these two again. Matthew, Matthew seventeen. This child, it, you talk about torments, moonstruck, a lunatic. Sore vex, okay, skin's being ripped open. He's thrown into the fire. 
he, he, he's foaming, he's gnashing his teeth because of the great pain. And I brought him to thy disciples, plural, it would not have been Peter, James, and John, because they were up on the mountain. And they could not heal him. You got to wonder who. Who? Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Notice how he's always attacking the generation. How long shall I be with you? You've not got very long. How long shall I suffer? That means let you. How long should I put up with you? I mean, Jesus, God, he's about had it with these people. These disciples, most of them have been walking three and a half years with Jesus, and still. There's something that these disciples could not heal this child. Bring him hither to me. Jesus rebuilt the devil, so the lunatic had a devil. We, we learned that with the other scriptures. Not, not if you just read Matthew. And he, the devil, would have departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. We'll get more when we get into Mark. Then came disciples to Jesus apart. The ones that... Why could not we cast them out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. When Jesus was back in his hometown, he couldn't do many miracles. The Bible says because of unbelief. You know what may be one problem in your Christian life, and we can run to the Christian life? Things may not be happening to you because you don't believe it. If you don't believe, it ain't going to happen. That's faith. For verily I say unto you, now here we go. Here's scripture taken completely out of context. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, so go, so go to any Christian store, any Christian catalog, and you can get a necklace with a little grain of mustard seed. That's not what Jesus said. He's using it as an illustration. And if you were to look at a mustard seed, it's very, very tiny. He didn't say get a mustard seed and put it in a ring, put it in a necklace. That's idolatry. He used to say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. All right, now try that. Did, did the mountain move? Don't go be so bold. I got faith. Oh, I got faith. Okay, let's see you move that mountain. What are you going to do? That's the scriptures. It will shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So they say, Yeah, I can do all through Christ all things through Christ with strength in me. So I'll turn around and say, All right, go jump off the Empire State Building. So what do, you, what do you do with that verse in Matthew with no church? Let's read the context. Then, verse 19, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast them out? Jesus said unto them, Who's the them? No church, no Christian. The disciples. The least nine of them. Most nine. Minimum of two for, for a plural. And he told his disciples, you have got to have faith as, as a grain of mustard seed. You've been walking, talking, living, eating, drinking and with Jesus for three and a half years. 
You've been healing, resurrecting the dead, preaching. What was your problem with this guy? The context is this devil was in the child. Why couldn't we do it? Don't go running this verse to the church. There is nothing that Paul says about your faith in healing. James will tell you of the Jewish church, if there's any sick among you, bring oil, anoint them. Paul's response to somebody that's sick would be pray for them. Maybe the laying of hands. There was one man that was sick near to death, and the Lord prevented his death, gave him, gave him more life, and Paul says, I am pleased. How be it, this kind, this faith, goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Okay, we're, we are to pray and fast, but we're not dealing with lunatics. We're not dealing with devils. We are not Jesus' disciples. We are Christians. There are no Christians now. This is the trouble when, when you get some out there saying, well, the Christians are in the Old Testament. What are you going to do with Daniel 9 and Acts 2 when you talk about those people and they're talking about not the Christians, though there are some that preach, oh, the Christians in the Old Testament. Ah, that's Jewish. That's purely Jewish. Nothing but Jewish. The context of verse 20 and 21, there have been disciples, they failed at healing a man, they asked Jesus why we couldn't do it, and that's the mustard seed. Now, I don't think those disciples went around wearing mustard seed and necklaces and, and rings, I don't think Peter would have allowed it. 